I wonder if this thing still works. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. It's been a little bit, almost a month or so, I want to say. I, <laughs> I've been revamping everything here in the studio. So uh, no green screen today. I have uh, a few things I still have to get going here. Uh, we'll see about like the audio mixes. All this is brand new setup. So I just kind of winged it on the audio setup and like the mix. Uh, everything's multi-track, so I can probably do a lot in post uh, for edits and such. But I just kind of wanted to see like a, a full system setup. So the whole whole agenda for today is to reload this beast of a system. I have about a 16-core Xeon processor, a couple graphics cards, hopefully do some PCI pass-through. I doubt we'll get to that today. We'll get a few other things going. So the, the big thing here is to take this system... Uh, we'll put Linux, just probably Arch as the base, and then go from there. Oh, how's it going? Hey, Ram, Julian. Yeah, uh, Drummer, thanks for the tier one, man. Uh, it's been a little while, so so I apologize for being away, but I just really was just gotten surrounded by a whole bunch of stuff, and I looked around in my studio here, which when I say studio, it's, it's really just two walls in my garage. <laughs> and it was just a, a cluttered mess. And I was like, I have to clean up everything and make it look nice. Uh, just so I enjoy being in here. And I think I've accomplished that. I've really, really, you know, looking at the main cam here. Let's just do direct cam. It's a lot better. This is a, a pretty good setup. And I even have another camera up here we can switch to. And I, I really enjoy the space now. So that's kind of where I'm at. And it's just, you know, it took me about a month to just it was so overwhelming there's just so much crap that it was very difficult to get through almost as soon as i looked at the pile of stuff and i was just like ugh okay let's go oh <laughs> uh, yeah debian's been updated i do need to update that tush but we'll get to it now that i got a good space we'll be able to churn out some content that's the thing is i just wanted to be able to come in here on a saturday or whenever and just hit go and then just start recording streaming whatever it is and then just enjoy being in this space and that, that's where we're at so a success <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. I, I did release that video earlier today i wish i could have done a better job on that video but at that point i was like dude i need to get something out it has been over 30 days which in the five years i've been recording content i've never had 30 day stretch where i didn't produce anything on any channel that was weird uh but it, it was a needed needed break slash revamp that had to happen on my end and i really had to just kind of reassess things and go what's working what's not working okay Let's just do that. And that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. I will be working on Titus Pi 4. I actually got it over here. We got that. Uh, got some pies. Uh, well, we got the Pi 4 and we got the Pi 5. Obviously, we need to make that universal. Maybe I should just call it the Pi 5, but we're not gonna we're not gonna adopt bad naming schemes from from other people in the tech industry. So we're just going to call it the Titus Pi 4 as it would be the fourth generation. Plasma 6 video definitely coming soon. Uh, I need to take a look at it. It's been a while since I've been on a desktop environment, man. Long, long, long time. So yeah, the next one I really want to do is just getting this system here. So now that we've got the physical space, we've talked about the physical space, getting all this nice and pretty and love living in. We have to do something about this right here this this windows bit ah oh, man i just i just installed an update that was like hey install this update to improve online microsoft cloud delivered experiences and i was just like oh i think i threw up in my mouth a little bit just reading this update anyways we gotta fix that we gotta get we gotta get back on linux because living in this os has been it's been fine but it just, it, it doesn't make me feel warm and fluffy in the inside. So actually the first thing we need to do is download Arch. We're going to get into it. Uh, we actually already have Nix on this system. And the reason why I'm choosing Arch and not just doing like a poll like I've done in the past and other stuff, I really want to pick the system that I enjoy the most. And after some soul searching, 
so, some 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 really deep reflection here i thought you know i really like i really like arch <laughs> i really i have the most fun in arch so yeah well that's what we're gonna install so that's the whole point it's not the most stable it's not the you know fill your rationale in here to what you pick but for me i just have the most fun in arch and that's the reason why i'm picking it no other no other uh reason than that so let's just grab the iso and uh see what we get today i don't know i don't know where we'll end up i don't know how long i'm gonna stream i don't know how long this is gonna take probably a while for all of it i mean it just it's just so much fun <laughs> yes it will be updated to the pi 5 uh, EWO. Uh, there's no uh, Titus Pi absolutely has to be updated and I want it uh, available on the Pi 3, Pi 4 and Pi 5. Same image for all three. So we'll make that universal. Oh, let's see here. All right. We got Arch downloaded. It only It's actually gone up in size. You know, Arch used to be about 600, 700 megs. In recent years, it has actually gone up to um, like a thousand, almost a gig now. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, to think this this was by, uh, this was actually back there, <laughs> and now it's just a chair. God, removing this and going through this was just oh my gosh! You, that's why I've been gone for a month untangling everything here all these cables everything had to get ripped out oh just looking at it just oh man having ptsd flashbacks i'm sorry i, I digress here we go let's uh load up we'll just toss it on our ventoy this system now uh if you haven't seen the latest video i've got a big giant workstation back here now we're not just running like a 5600x anymore as well We've got a full Xeon W5 3435X, 16 core, 32 thread, no efficiency cores here. We are just using some power, just pure, unadulterated power. <laughs> and it, it should be able to jam out some crazy VMs. We got a couple GPUs here, uh, a little 2060 and a 7800 XT all bundled in primary card on this one's going to be the 7800 XT uh and we have you know three ethernet connections actually I have more than three ethernet connections uh but we're mainly just using a, a 10 10 gig adapter a server adapter I I have personally that I installed we have actually seven disks in here many of these aren't even seen or initialized by Windows we have uh some regular hard drives in here that you don't see uh, that's actually a mirrored array, a lot of storage, about three terabytes on those. Each one of these varying things, all hot swappable. We 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 can we can we can we're gonna have some fun. Oh, we're gonna have some fun. Ah, uh, so anyways, that's uh that that's where we're going. Uh, now having said that, let's continue on our Arch Linux install. What's the last time we did an Arch? It says uh last bit of 2000 uh what 2023. It looks to be about September or so. All right, so we got Arch transferred over to here. Now we should be able to reboot and start the load of this. Now, I'm trying to think of what drive I am using and to put this on. This is always a difficult, uh, difficult one. Uh, you know, let's just go ahead and initialize this. We can put GPT on it. That's fine. That's that mirrored array. Uh, Raid Array. Um, we have, uh, I think it's this guy down here. Disk 5, uh, 2 terabyte NVMe. This is what we're going to probably toss it all on. I don't think we're going to format this drive. We'll probably, I think we have a 100 gig root partition and a 1800 home partition and then a half gig EFI partition very simplistic partition scheme as long as we get the right disc <laughs> you know that's always the fun part uh so you might see a disaster here or maybe not i don't know i don't know uh one way or another we're gonna end there 
So let's let's restart this guy and get going. Get out of Windows. Get back on on pure Arch. Oh, get my nerd card back. Yeah, we're gonna do some hard drive roulette. <laughs> Oh, uh, now I can't remember what the key was. Uh, now these HP giant workstations, they're basically servers, but they look like workstations. They're not very loud, which is nice. Um, long startup delay. Holy crap. So not a, I think it's delete or F2. Might be escape actually. Can't remember what it is. Was it delete? Maybe it was F2. Wolf security. Uh, marketing gimmicks. You gotta love it. Shit. We'll look it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, we're, we're setting up a server. I wanted to record a bare metal redo. Also, I don't know how long this is going to take, but like I said, it'll be a little bit start and stop depending on uh how how this goes uh what is this uh, i think it's like an hp z8 fury g5 workstation bios what how do you get into it uh bios key okay for laptops what what do we got i guess we'll look at that sometimes they have weird bios keys i thought it was like it's usually f2 or, or delete but I think in this one it was a little bit different where are you at where are you at hp your website sucks yeah brand new hardware so this this hardware we really haven't used much this will actually be the actually this will be the first install i do on this system because i just slapped my nvme drives in this system and then just reloaded a couple drivers i never actually have installed an os on this system so you all will be witnessing for the very first time uh the install of this all right here we go user guide all right let's just go bios uh updating bios okay f10 oh no you hit escape and then you get to choose. So there's like a sub menu after it. So it's escape, not F2 or delete. That's right. Okay. We got it now. I was like, what's the key? Arch with plasma six. We, I mean, we could do that. Uh, we, we, we'll load a couple different, a uh, couple different variations on this arch spin. I'll probably have my classic DWM for X11, Xorg type stuff. We'll do Hyperland, obviously for a Tyler. Uh, probably that'll probably be my main setup, possibly. Or we could do KDE. KDE is always, it's been a long time since I've explored KDE. Uh, it's always been my favorite desktop environment. So, I mean, we might be doing some Plasma 6 action today, now that I think about it. That actually probably would be the best for uh, this, this, this system or setup. All right, come on. I'm hitting escape. Come on. I think it's after it says startup delay that it requires it. Okay, I've hit escape like a gajillion times. Oh, come on. You piece of... Ah. Maybe do... It might not like my custom keyboard, too. Huh. Let me think about this. Why does it not like... Okay, we're going to try a standard ANSI... An ANSI types keyboard setup, I guess. Uh... Look at that. I can just find stuff now. I got a like a little drawer over here. So we'll just hook up a crappy old keyboard and see if it's just the escape key for this one that's having problems. All right. Okay, yeah, that does work. All right. Well, we're not trying to get in safe mode here. We don't want to boot into Windows. So holding shift will get you into safe mode on hitting restart. We could also force a BIOS. Uh, I, I don't think we need to do any of that, though. I think we can just reboot. I think it's just something with the keyboard. We'll see, though. Just face rolled. Hey, what's right? Oh, oh, the PS2 connector, man. I remember those. Yeah, there we go. 
I think I just had to tap escape on, on reboot. I don't think it's necessarily the keyboard. I'm just going to unhook that keyboard. I think I was just a little slow. Hmm. All right, let's see here. We'll go probably just boot menu. Uh, any miny mo. It would probably be. Oh, if I was Ventoy, I would be. I would be right here. <laughs> it's going to be a good stream. It does not like my keyboard for some odd reason. Interesting. Oh, well. Uh, let's go install medium. We're going to go full from scratch, too. Uh, I'm still using the Digma Defy. I did a video about it. The one I've got down there is just like an old ANSI keyboard I got. I have a whole bunch of old Dell USB keyboards, too. All right. Uh... Let's see, what do we got for BLK ID? Oh man, that's a lot of partitions. Uh, looks like NVMe E1 will be where we're going. Uh, NVMe E1, uh, P1 is going to be the partition. Uh, we did just EXT4 for this guy, so should be a pretty simplistic install. Let's go Arch install, get to it. Okay. Um, huh. What do we got going on here? Arch install. I broke the regular Arch installer. There's too many drives. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. For real? No. Well, it, it, you know, typical me. I'll find a way to break it, but you guys saw me. All I did was download the ISO and just type arch install. I mean, there's nothing, nothing crazy here. We've updated the databases. Uh, man, less than 20 minutes and we're already into territory where we're like, Hey, this ain't working. Oh, I guess we got to go complete old school. Well, ah, <sighs> I guess the archway. Yeah, I, I guess we could just do the, the old school archway. Uh, I don't really recall the whole whole bit on this one. So let's, uh, we already made the file system. So we probably will need to do a format of the file system. Uh, I think uh, just MKFS help. Uh, let's see, what do we got? So you already made the file system. What's the format command? I can't remember. God, I bless. I, I'm like so out of practice. Uh, what was the manual arch? Uh, got arch install, but I think there was. I thought there was a manual too that you could reference on the install. Yeah, we could do make fs f32, and then. Let's just be okay. ID this real fast. So we'd go make FS fat uh, or VFAT, isn't it? VFAT. And then it's F32. I want to say F32 is all one space. And then we go dev NVMe one. And then it's N1 P1. All right. And then we go make FX EXT four. Okay. And if we go help here, what do we got? I think we can just go make EXT four. And then for this one, we're going to just do. Yeah, I think we'll do this for boot. This will be the root. Uh, and we're not going to actually format the home directory. We're going to leave that alone. So we'll go dev NVMe one, 
and then N1 and probably like P2. Now, before I do P2, I think this is right. I'm actually just going to do that. So it says that does not exist, but we're going to go LSBLK. Just double check that size. Yeah, we're good. P2 is the 100 gig uh, one. Uh, you know, I'm going to increase the font size here as well, just so everybody can read it in chat. Just don't wanted to double check before I wiped this out. Last mounted January 14th. Dude, that's been almost two months. Lordy, okay. I have not lost any weight, actually. I've been 185 for the past year or so, but my fitness has drastically increased. I, I went from one pull up to about 30 pull ups now. Deadlift went from like nothing to, I think my last deadlift was about 350. And then uh, squats and stuff like that. Yeah. So my fitness has gotten really good. That's been actually my primary focus in life this past year or so. Uh, but. Anywho, all right, so we got our drive pretty much formatted how I want. Now, I think we can just do like a ch root. There's there's so much stuff here. Um, probably like a pack. Well, let's see if we can't do it from memory. I'm sure chat will help me out where I mess up. It, it didn't actually cost me 8K, but yeah, I think that's what this, uh, that was it, superworkstations.com that sponsored it. They were, they were the ones that sent it out to me, and I was like, hey, guys, I want this, this, and this. <laughs> originally it was going to be a 4090 and then that ended up uh getting uh squashed down and then i ended up going ah you know what i'm just gonna grab that drive out and i ended up putting all my stuff in it anyways it's kind of funny it worked out though okay so let's mount these drives so what this should look like if we look oh actually let's fix our font uh set font uh, if we look at set font, we could, should do a LS of USR, share, KBD. Uh, do you know, hmm, actually, what happened here? Okay. Uh, let's do a LS, USR, share, KBD, and console fonts. Um, yeah, Terminus fonts are actually by default now. Thank you, Arch team, for finally doing that. Oh, every single distribution in existence should do. Uh, let's go 24B. Yeah, there we go. Just just so everybody can kind of see what we're doing. So we got this for the layout now. Yeah, I, I need to do the PC specs and the, the thing. We This is the very first install, so I'll definitely update these towards the end of the stream. This is a beefy, beefy system though. Ooh, it's not messing around. So we're gonna go mount dev NVMe one in one P1. Actually, let's go P2 first. And we're gonna mount that to MNT. Then we're gonna mount dev NVMe E1 in one P1 to MNT boot. It's not gonna have not gonna be there, so that's fine. Let's go boot and you know what let's also make while we're here mnt home now what do we got all right now we got the mount there oh that's weird I'm noticing my arrow keys are a little off anyways dev nvme one in one p3 now and that's going to go into mnt home so now if we look at MNT, this should be the makings of an entire drive. So if we go home, we should see Titus there, which is fine. And then we should have boot. This is going to be that drive. So we look good. So now we've got our drives pretty much formatted. We have the home directory from whatever was in my home directory. I don't, I don't remember. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I need in there. And then we'll go from from there as well. Dragon Skies, thanks for the prime. We'll definitely do Hyperland and Plasma. That's like a given. That's like a, a both those. You don't install Arch without installing those. So, hmm. Now that we've got those mounted, let's try and do Packstrap. 
So I think you can just do pack strap. Can you just do like pack strap MNT and then what is it? Base and wow, what is it? Base config contrib base contrib maybe. And oh, okay. I, yeah. Base devil. Oops. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, Linux firmware. Uh, how do we feel about the like AMD? What about the U code? How how is U code? What is the state of U code in Arch these days? Probably not necessary. I would imagine. I don't know if they've ever done that or not. Yeah. All right. We're gonna do Plasma Six. We'll start with Plasma Six. I think more more people have inquired about it. And like I said, it's been forever since I've done a Plasma install. Uh. What are the Plasma install packages? You got like the meta. I think meta was the minimal version. And then I don't want the fully bloated one with like Conquer and, and Contacts and all those stupid KDE apps with starting with K. I just can't do it. Uh, I don't think we need the key ring actually. We'll just do uh, the base. Look at that. I think the Arch installers improved vastly. I didn't even update my mirrors and look how fast it downloaded stuff. Plasma desktop is the minimal. Okay. Let's do a search after this for plasma desktop. Yeah. Well, uh, next up is probably CH root. Oh, it's just plasma dash desktop. Okay, good. I was going to do meta, which was the bad one. Ooh, ah. Yeah, don't forget to generate F stab. <laughs> uh, I remember when I was making Linux videos and I, I always called it F stab. And he was like, it's FS tab, man. And I'm like, yeah, but F stab sounds cooler. <laughs> All right, let's go. I think it's like arch CH root, actually. And we we'll go into that. All right, so now we're in our new install. Uh, let's go Pac-Man SYU. Perfect. Um, ooh, we do need to do a generation of that, which we do need to. Ah, let's let's exit uh, our ch root real fast. Gen f stab. Thanks, H A. I was totally was gonna space out, even though I mentioned it. So we got U, P, M N T, and we're outputting this to. Uh, MNT ETC FS tab. All right. Got that. Uh, now let's, let's switch back to our CH root. Let's Pac-Man S Vim. Gotta have some Vim, Vim in our lives. Very lonely life without Vim. And... Yeah, that generation's fine for now. It'll give us the base system. Uh, we can, I want to pull in all our NFS drives as well, but that's actually a pretty good uh, FS tab starting off. Let's go Pac-Man. Uh, we're going to do Grub on this one. Grub, is it Grub 2? I think it's just Grub, huh? Ah, it's just Grub, I guess. Okay. I think it's what the rel base systems have Grub 2. And then I think, no, nah, I think Debian's grub as well. All right. Uh, grub. Uh, do we do the grub install after we exit? No, nah, I think we do grub install now. Is it just update grub maybe? Grub update. Nah. Oh, that's right. It's in my, I'm thinking Debian. Eh. Make config. Uh, you know, system D boot, I'm just not a fan of. I really like pimping out my grub. There's just nothing better than a graphical grub that looks cool. And I actually tested system D boot versus grub. And uh, funnily enough, grub, even though system D is actually part of the system, you think it would boot faster because it's already there. And then you're tacking grub on top of it. Not so. System D boot actually took about a second or two longer. A very marginal improvement using Grub, but still an improvement nonetheless. You would think System D boot would be at least a second or two faster, but it's actually slower than Grub. Who knew? It's kind of a fun finding. Uh, I think it was make config. Uh, 
shoot no grub make config yeah there we go thank you uh go grub install yeah uh do we need to do the target efi i think it actually figures all that out by itself uh i want to say you can just do grub install some systems this works some systems it doesn't let's go lsb okay and i think we can just go grub install boot uh actually dev nvme one in one ah eh, never mind so i'm wrong it, it needs efi directory specified uh so actually i think the efi directory you just need to put that in boot oh uh, we need efi boot manager first all right now let's try it all right cool now we got grub install done now we'll do the make config uh very close ah on the the install script though it got me to where i needed appreciate the the comment got me got me almost 100 percent there boot cfg what do we got boot grub grub cfg right cfg there we go uh we don't have os prober okay also need that this is such a it's gonna be a slow install as i remember all this stuff it's been so long since i've had to do a manual arch install uh, you can actually put it in boot ah uh, you can make an, a separate efi directory and it actually does if you look at the boot it actually has an efi that it makes by default you're not wrong like let's do pwd uh you're not wrong but what most installers and most distros do when they're making the efi is they do an, a lowercase efi and then they boot into install the in, in in that instead of just using the root of boot the whole reason for doing it that way is you'd have separate partition for the efi installer and not have your linux kernels on your boot i don't like that i like the linux kernels being on my boot partition as well uh that being said if we look at the boot partition uh let's do a ls long listing and you'll notice that you got to have a lot of space like the fallback uh, in it ram fs image for this uh it's good it hogs up quite a bit of space so if you have a whole bunch of different images you can definitely fill up your boot partition uh, but we got like a half a gig to work with here so i don't anticipate this filling up at any time but uh it's just one of those things uh, with some guides online don't ever think like this is the written gospel the only way you can do it uh it's just a different different preference and that's my preference oh yeah i could do the os prober thing for now i think we we're just gonna say screw it um but well is there typically you'd come into grub here and then make your modifications through e here and then then do redo your your thing here let's just there and then we would do the make fs again which I should have just done that there we go all right bam okay cool so then we got os prober everything looks good this is what we currently have we have the base system let's do a pac-man go to the root let's do a pac-man s and install plasma which is what you guys wanted right plasma desktop uh we're gonna go pipe wire jack on this one and uh we'll go ffmpeg now does this grab ssdm let's see i think it does or sddm da, 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 da. Oh, we'll see let's see what we get yeah we're trying plasma 6 what what version of plasma 6 we're on we'll find out i should have paused it uh before we did it it's roughly 400 packages did it not even did we miss network manager i can't even i don't even see network manager here we'll, well we can grab network manager network manager is always kind of a weird one to grab it always seems like it's case sensitive so like if you do a pac-man uh let's do a search uh network i think it's like network manager like that and then you get network manager applications uh or maybe i'm thinking of it on debian I guess just network manager will be fine that's fine 
And as far as SDDM, is that installed? I think it's installed, isn't it? Oh, no, it didn't install SDDM. Well, we're going to need that. Uh, so we'll grab that as well. Yeah. Network managers in service. Yeah. Oh, Plasma auto pulls it. Didn't look like it did. Oh, I think SDDM was a different uh, because this grabbed Xorg server. That's fine. I don't think it pulled LightDM. That wouldn't make sense for Plasma because Plasma team makes SDDM. So I, I know they're not going to bundle a different uh, display manager with that. All right. So we got Grub. We've installed Grub. Technically, it should boot now. Uh, SDDM probably do like a system CTL enable SDDM. All right. Anything else we need to do before we relaunch? I feel like we're missing something. Did I grab console? I think that comes, uh, console actually comes with the desktop. Oh no, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do a system enable of a network manager. Uh, no network. Oh, dirt to dirt. All right, we got our network manager. Oh, we need to make a user. How are we gonna? <laughs> how are we gonna log in, right? Uh, user add. What do we got? Uh, let's go user add, and we're gonna go options. First one's gonna be. Probably like D for defaults, maybe. No, I don't even think we need to do that probably groups i think we can just do base directory do we oh eh, well, actually yeah if we do cm i think we'll actually have the home directory yeah uh, we'll go ahead and do it the, the directory is already there the base directory for the home directory of the new account i want to say we want to do something like this for the base directory instead of making a new creation of the home. It's a little bit different. Uh, then would do like G users uh, as far as access groups, uh, wheel. I like to do wheel, video, KVM, and audio. I know, I'm just like, give me all the groups. Probably pseudo as well. Although I don't even know if pseudo is a group or not. And then do Titus. So something like that. Is there a video group? Typically why I use a video group. And I, I don't think there is a video group. Here, let's see. Yeah. Uh, groups. No pseudo group exists. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we did wheel, video, KVM, and audio. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Uh, there is no pseudo group technically now you could do like a v pseudo and then kind of see what we ha we're working with on the pseudo commands uh right now this is what we have we could uh yeah. we could change a few things uh i kind of want to same thing without a password you just take out this and say everybody in the wheel can just execute everything with pseudo without a password you see nothing <laughs> um uh, let's see yeah a uac moment there don't call me out on it chat uh we're gonna just clear that out you saw nothing all right so we've got network manager we've got our user now know what we also need to do we need to go and assign titus a password likewise we need to assign the root password um, all right. Intel. Yeah, we are. We already did the update of grub, but we do need to probably Intel U code. I like that idea. Let's go Intel, uh, Intel U code. Yeah, actually assigning a root password is not needed. And, and technically the proper thing to do would be not use a root password. Yeah, we've already enabled SDDM. It does look like it's going ahead and making the configuration file for root here as well. I bet you it goes ahead and updates our grub for us. It's kind of crazy, like all the stuff we used to have to do that we no longer have to do. 
Uh, I don't think we did grab the Plasma Whalen session. I'm not a big fan of Whalen though. Still, still not a, still not jumping on the Whalen bandwagon yet. But there is a progress. Usually, I talk about like Synergy or. It's actually, there's an open source project called Input Leap that's the closest to getting Wayland support for my double workstations. So, Wayland's good. It's just, you know, there's still a couple things it's missing that X, X11 has. All right. I don't think there's anything else I can think of that we we need to do. Um, I guess we can run the make config again. Uh, let's go grub. Actually, grub mk. Oops. Oh, thought we nah. I guess it's in here somewhere. I tried to just bang it. Oh well, we'll just do the arrow up until we get what we need. All right, let's reboot. Did we do it right? Oh, wait. Uh, one other thing. Since I pulled in my old uh, directory, what I want to do here is take complete ownership of this directory. You notice how in, anytime you like recycle your home directory, it's always good to do an ownership of it. So let's uh, do that. Now you see that the users groups properly assigned, Titus users there, it also went through anything in the home directory. So if we do a listing, all this stuff now is owned by me. Uh, and then we can start fixing things up. All right. So now we exit and reboot. Uh, one other issue we might have too. No, I, I don't think my, I don't think my Nvidia card will take precedent. We will have to do a uh, block list for their Nvidia card. So that, that's a thing. Yeah, we're going to be doing VFIO. We're going to do some PCI passer. Not today, probably. Unless all this goes extremely well. Let's see if we can get the startup menu using my standard keyboard here. Uh, well, right now we're doing... Uh... Oh, this, this just is not... No, it doesn't like that. You turkey. I wonder what's up with that, with my... Uh keyboard not registering a startup menu oh uh, noise oh never mind uh, the database found it okay cool well i worked out now we might need to do like a no mode set if we have some issues um there could be some other things here black screen no do we got anything hey Oh, look at that. Uh, it looks like it actually defaulted to the Plasma Wayland session up here, too. Okay. Well, that's got to be a first for me. Did it actually pull everything in? That was too easy. Huh. Wow. Uh, let's grab... Yeah, we'll use... Uh... Damn, that is one sexy-looking setup, isn't it? Wow. I didn't anticipate this to work. I'm almost disappointed. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I'm almost a little disappointed this didn't fail on the first go. Uh, okay. Uh, now I'm just like, okay, what do we got? We get any file manager. So I guess we'll uh, toss a file manager. Ah, you know, what do we want to do for our file manager? What do we got? Probably... I, I don't know. I kind of like Nemo. I also like Nautilus. I know that's GNOME-based file managers, but that would be like blasphemy putting that on KDE. I guess let's Dolphin it. I mean, what do you guys think? I, I mean, Dolphin, Nautilus... It all it all feels pretty good to me. Thunar. Thunar is one of my favorites. I've rocked Thunar for the longest time. Anytime you do tiling window managers... You usually do like a PC Man FM or a Thunar just for that. Oh, man. I'm just thinking. What do I like the most? I guess I'm going to go Dolphin just because I really like the integration of the terminal. The terminal integration in Dolphin's pretty nice. 
dolphins stick to the ecosystem. I know. You know me. I like to at least try and break things. All right, fine. I'll, I'll concede for now. Oh, blue. Ugh. Got to get rid of blue. I bet it still sucks. Um, hmm. What is the default for uh, the search bar? Is it F2? No. Oh, shoot. I don't remember. Anywho. So now we got our dolphin. We'll pin that guy. Uh, we got let's 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 pimp this thing out a little bit though. Breeze dark, yes please. All right, let's not blind myself anymore. What does the look and feel look like these days? I remember I used to always use that global. Did they change the name of it? It used to it was it used to be called look and look and feel. I guess so. Let's get new global theme. Stone. Ooh. Ooh, look at this. This is pretty. Utterly Nord. You know me and my Nord themes. I'm a little bit obsessed. Rounded edges versus non-rounded. Blur background. Oh, we're gonna... I'm sorry. I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for a Nord theme. We're gonna go with Utterly Nord for Plasma 6. If it actually installs. It probably needs... I think we gotta install Discover. Alt space? Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, could not install. Missing dependencies. KNSR. Uh, what dependency are we missing? What's KNSRC? Huh. All right. Uh, let's go. Another quality of life we need. Before we forget. Let's go into global shortcuts. All right. Console, oh, control alt tab, huh? No, we're gonna need something better. Meta X is kind of what I like for that. I know a lot of people like a control enter, but I'm weird. What can I say? I am a sucker for that. And then I almost like setting it to Windows shortcut keys, not to make everybody throw up in their mouths, but hey, it works, it works. Uh, and I, it's very easy. I don't have to remember new hotkeys for each, each deal. All right. So we got that dolphin. Bam. For dolphin, meta E. Perfect. That'll open that. Same for windows. And oh, wow. It supports HDR. Get out of here. All right. What else we got? Oh, we got, we need NeoFetch too. Uh, all right. We got those. This needs to be pimped out. Oh my gosh. Ugh, this looks so gross. We gotta fix it. What what uh let's see here. I wanna say it should auto pull all my fonts in because I, I pulled my my uh definite settings in, so it probably went ahead and grabbed all my my fonts. So let's see if it did. Settings configure let's go to profiles okay let's go new appearance oh i think we'll breeze is fine i guess go hacker green on green on black nah let's go blue on black now nah, people won't like that let's edit foreground let's go like a little bit lighter blue all right that's cool. Uh, choose font. Do we have a Meslio? Ah, oh, we don't have any nerd fonts. Oh, uh, we got to fix that. Okay, one second. We'll be back. Now, is there a default uh, text increase? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to rock console. We're going to try and go native here. It's going to be unlike me and usually how I do things, but I think we'll go native on this one. Yes. Oh, thank you, my love. Sushi. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Get out of here, AH. You're going to get banned recommending Conquer. <laughs> <laughs> I love sushi too, by the way. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, let's fix this. So, what I like to do is I like to adhere to the XDG standards. And the XDG standards, if I am correct, 
specify it wants all your fonts in dot local share and then fonts. Did it wipe out all my fonts? I bet you it didn't. Where are you fonts? It might have. Huh. Ah, oh, what the hell? Oh, that's what's happening. Oh, wow. Oh, no. My home folder. Okay, we knew we were going to mess something up. It was just a matter of time. All right, best way to change your home folder. Nah. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh. <laughs> Titus, Titus. Base directory should have been forward slash home. Should have done dash B home, not dash B home Titus. I should have known better. Such a noob. Uh. All right. Well, how do we fix this? Rookie mistake. I, I, yeah, I probably should have just left it out, Tiberius, 100%. Should have just left it out. <laughs> so disappointed. Um, Pac-Man S. Midori. Is my keyboard not working right? What is going on here? Oh, no. Uh, let's just let's just grab some Midori. Some people are like, what's Midori? It's a pretty lightweight browser. It's like Conquer but better <laughs> uh, let's go what's the easiest way to do this it says just do that okay is it gonna allow it it's probably not gonna allow us to do it from within the user uh you know it's it's, it's an old thread but the thread still checks out it may be from 2010 but i think it'll be fine yeah i knew that was gonna happen yeah it's an old it's an oldie but a goodie i mean user mod shouldn't change in 14 years <laughs> i guess we'll find out <laughs> all right uh let's do uh control alt uh f2 uh oh is it um control is it control shift f2 why am I drawing a blank here? I thought it was just control alt to F2 or F3, F1. Oh, is it this stupid keyboard with the modification keys? Probably. Okay, there's TTY. Yeah, it's control alt F2. Like F2 should bring me F2, TTY2. Uh, is TTY2 being used? TTY3 isn't though. Uh, let's do root. Now we can go um, set font, just so you guys can see it. You go tur v 24b. Oh, is terminus fonts not on here? Oh, terminus fonts is installed on the installer, but not the actual. All right, good to know. Terminus fonts. Hmm. All right, fine. What is it? <laughs> It's not plural, it's just terminus font. I was so close. All right, now let's set font. Ah, uh, there we go. Gotta have terminus fonts. If you're ever working in terminal or console, you gotta have your terminus font. All right, let's get the rig information. We forgot the most important command of all. Ah, yes. That is what we're working with today. I forgot to put that out on the stream. I'm such a noob. Oh, it's so glorious. I could just sit here and watch it. <laughs> that package count is actually pretty darn low, isn't it? 628? Full full plasma? That feels like an untold story, doesn't it? It does not feel like... I mean, that's really impressive. <laughs> no 4080, yeah. I actually removed the 4080. They actually sent me a 4080 with it. Or no, no. They sent me a 4070 Super. And then I ended up taking it out and using it on the inside PC for... I think I was doing... A, I was a, making my own little AI bot. I don't like your thinking, though. Not like a cheesy, clickbaity stuff. Um, I was doing it for a program project. 
believe it or not, NVIDIA has this cool uh, AI chat tool that builds your own bot, but it well, the bot basically just indexes man manuals and then it makes its own repo of, and basically answers and learns from only the inputs you give it. So you can input all the manuals into it. So what I run into a lot when I ask AI stuff like Open GPT or Chat GPT and all the others out there is inevitably when I'm asking PowerShell questions, specifically for Windows PowerShell, it always ends up screwing up. It ends up pulling stuff in, like uh, especially like I'll probably make another one for like C Sharp just because it pulls in weird .NET libraries that don't exist. Anywho, when you isolate what it can learn off of, it only learns the right things, and it's so much better. All right. So we've got that. Uh, let's uh, go sudo user mod dash D home Titus Titus, right? So now we come back into uh, what? Control Alt F1 or is it F7? Hmm. This keyboard is driving me insane for these combinations. Remind me to make my own. It's F3? What? F1, F2. Okay. Uh, control Alt F2. Weird. Okay. That's odd. Let's see if this fixes it. Hey. Yeah, we got to change the SDDM theme. Uh, actually, we're going to probably just do an auto login for SDDM. All right. That's looking much better. Uh, discover. Now, did it? Okay, remember that. No, it did not get our hotkeys. So let's reset our hotkeys. Ooh, I still wanted to do this. Oh, that's right. We were missing that. Let's go console. And oh, we need Zoxide and Starship. Get our... Can we just do like a Pac-Man S Starship? I don't think we can. Yeah. Well, maybe. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's just in a default repos. What about Zoxide? Dude, look at that. So then we have that. Pull it back up. All right. Pretty good. It doesn't look right because our uh, fonts are off. But if we go to font, uh, what is it? No, no. Uh, FC. Let's go FC cache. Um, and then just do like a VF. What do we have? We did not pull in that. And if we go PWD, okay, our home directory is correct now. Well, we should have all those under share. We should have our fonts. So this is actually the proper XDG standard for fonts. And we should have everything here. Hmm. FC. Why didn't it grab this directory? User share Titus dot cache and then Titus dot font config. Okay. Yeah. So this is the proper font folder. So now if we just do a listing of the caches in FC list, we should have Meslo, Noto. Yeah. Okay. We got all our fonts now. I was, I was sitting there going, ah, oh, what? Uh, the dot config user dash DRRs. Let's take a look at that next. We'll get that cleaned up. My favorite's LGS nerd font at about a 16. Okay, so to clean this up a little more, it's been a while since I've used console. I really don't like like this title, title bar and stuff. Let's see if we can't like clean this up more and ignore bell events. I hate bells. Environment, that's fine. Yeah. How's it going, Faye? Let's go default. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. I'm just going through all the different events here. I don't like having like this massive title bar. Usually you can go like no title bar and frame. And then we just got to hide this top one. And then we should have a little bit better, uh, better setup. Let's go global shortcuts here or just go shortcuts. We got to kill blue as well. I hate blue. Oh, and there's other default options we got to set as well. 
Oh, doing great. Doing great. Let's see. Some basic commands I kind of like to do, probably like a K1 modification here, would be to kill, kind of kill windows. So if you look, here's all the default shortcut keys, but I like to make it a little bit easier. So meta control escape is to kill a window. I kind of like this to just be meta Q and it's already set. It's already assigned to action close window of K win. Well, that's to kill a window. Okay. Oh, okay. Never mind. That's actually been rebound. It used to not be there. Oh, we're doing arch today. Arch all day, every day. Now, I wonder. That's pretty close. So you can just close, open. Ah, shortcuts. I forgot we got to rebind that. So now we can open, close. That will. Not sure on the color scheme, but we're going to keep it for now. Yeah. All right. Huh. Other things to make this look better. Opacity. So we have that. Miscellaneous, I think, is where. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Where'd they head the opacity? Hmm. Yeah, KD6. This is interesting. Did console change? No, it's in here somewhere. I'm just missing it. There's no way. It would be under appearance, you'd think. Maybe not, actually. Yeah, whatever. Oh, it's under colors? Edit color scheme? Okay. So if you go color scheme and font, it's here. And then in here, this is where... You blur the background and then you add the opacity. So, whoa, okay. That's kind of cool. All right. What if we don't blur it? What does that look like? Ooh, I don't know. Blur versus no blur. I think it's the blur for just functionality. I mean, if you had a minimal background, I guess it wouldn't matter that much, but I feel like that's the best right there. All right. Or you could go less transparency without the blur. Yeah, that's true. I almost like the more transparency. That's pretty good. Okay. Next on the agenda. I guess we could do H top. Uh, let's go pseudo Pac-Man S H top. Uh, actually, no. Let's go bash top. That's what the true chads use. Uh, I think it's just B top these days. Yeah. Although that doesn't really show too much. Huh. Interesting. We need all the blind you all. <laughs> we got a Nord in here. I need a Nord everything. White out. Sorry. Horizon. Oh, that's nice. Uh, one Dark's one of my favorites. One Dark's. Uh, Tokyo Storm's neat. Dracula. Ah, Nord. There we go. Everything else doesn't matter presets uh okay cool uh let's take a look at the manager inside of kde now what is that called uh system monitor oh okay just kde desktop doesn't have system monitor what's up z80 yeah yeah <laughs> there's too many cores on this one to actually to pack them all in i think htop does a better job of that when you have multiple cores, let's see. What does HTOP look like? <laughs> it's all cores. <laughs> you get no processes in HTOP. There's just too many cores. Okay, well. <laughs> that's that's great. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Sorry, I can't help having having that many cores, you know. I just you know, they asked me how many cores I want, and I was like Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. What else do we need to grab? I think we got basic things here. Let's look at our backups. Um, what do we got on the FS tab? Probably do like an auto mount with NFS. So grabbing like all of these would be pretty good. Um, we'll just grab like the last five lines of that. Import that in. Uh, but first we need to grab like all the NFS utilities. So let's go Pac-Man, 
Um, what do we got? Oops, not NFS. Let's see what searches we need. I want to say NFS-utils and then probably GVFS. That's gnome based. I don't know if we need that though. I think just NFS utils. GVFS. Ah, you know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get GVFS just because I think Dolphin might have some requirements on it, even though it does say gnome. So let's let's grab those. Uh we shouldn't need any swap. I think I have 64 gigs. I mean, I'm not gonna use all that memory. We're just, we, we don't need a swap in that instance. Yeah, we could definitely stretch its legs with some Gentoo. Oh, there's another thing we need to look at. Our make package and then installing a AUR system. <laughs> well, actually, I thought initially that I was going to just set up Proxmox and just run it all from Proxmox. Then I was like, do I really want to do that? And then I was like, nah, it would be probably better to do just like a base Arch install and have Linux as my main and then just launch into looking glass when I want to have Windows and then just have it right there. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, we could do Chaotic AUR. I don't mind Chaotic AUR. It's still... Uh, the Chaotic repos, I think, are still far better than using AUR. Oh, yeah, this has been the long... Uh, I took almost a... There's no videos, there's no streams, nothing for a bit there. Hmm. I kind of like the green. We'll see how long I hang on to that. <laughs> I haven't checked out uh, a lot of that. The panel customizations yet. Let's see what do we have. I don't think I'm going to hang on to console, to tell you guys the truth. It just doesn't... I don't know. Uh, give me like alacrity or a kitty type setup. Just console feels meh. It's okay. It just doesn't feel good to me though. Like just, just looking at it on its head. My knee jerk reaction is like, I see why they did and made these these options that they have. Because if for a, a, someone coming new into the environment, you definitely should use console. But spoken in true arch fashion here it's a lot of bloat in here too <laughs> i i mean when i want to when i want to pull up my terminal i just want to see the terminal i don't like the title bars i don't like a lot of the other this header copy paste split tab new tab view ah that's just not my jam just not my jam it's okay like i said consoles i really good especially for a new user totally get it but I don't know. I'm just not a big fan. Yeah, kind of the same thing for GNOME Terminal. Yeah, 100% savior. Kitty is my favorite. I, I, I think Kitty's like the best of both worlds. It's got a little bit more going on it than Alacrity. Alacrity is like your bare bones. It, it, you know, it's right there with like a suckless terminal. Um, like ST. You know, those, those are really minimal terminals. You really are just, hey, there's nothing else except the terminal. But Kitty has like a little bit extra, really cool config file. And it's just, I don't know. Kitty feels really good. I, I think that's where I'll end up on for sure. I'm not going to just completely give up on console just yet. Give me about 30 minutes. And then we're probably going to give up on it once I've configured a little bit more. <laughs> uh, let's go sudo vim etc fs tab. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve and do like a what like a hat of home titus backups fs tab and then let's just grab all that i guess yeah mm, delete that we'll just grab that as is um then anytime we change our fs tab let's just do a mount all and double check everything you can see, nope, definitely does not work <laughs> because I forgot mount points and I also forgot to do a daemon reload. So let's go media images, media. Uh, actually, there's an easier way to do this. Oh, man. Okay. 
let's just make images main pool drive fcp ch own recursive titus colon and then just do images main pool drive and fcp now if we do a long listing um, let's do a long listing cd media listing and now if we do now all pseudo system ctl daemon reload now let's do a app mount all and now we load this up we should have images main pool drive fcp perfect so that kind of pulls in all our image i was just pulling all my network stuff sure we can talk about when you till it into the stream uh yeah yeah this has been fun uh let's we do need to configure this i think we are missing a component oh okay uh, mountain wallpaper that sounds my style and i think this will error out because it's missing i probably doing like the discover store would grab the dependency for the install script here we'll, we'll wait for this to error i'm pretty sure it's gonna error though yeah this is plasma six we're just doing a, a setup and configuration maybe get to some pass through here hmm hmm i'm thinking there's something uh it probably doesn't necessarily need discover specifically i bet you there is some kind of dependency in discover that this install is using and I'm missing it. The scroll bar has to go. <sighs> Agreed. By the time I finish freaking no, we're not doing it anymore. By the time I finish this, it's just so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, that's just so much easier. Okay. Fixed. All right, let's try to install that. Uh, probably need to relaunch. Uh, there's probably like a KNS dependency. Plasma, probably maybe package kit, plasma dash discover, package kit QT, it's probably like package kit dash QT5. All right, let's try that. Uh, well, we're gonna fix our shortcuts real fast. Dolphin shortcut, Del wait, no, undo. Uh, console shortcut, that's the one we're gonna undo. Delete, apply, let's add application kitty. Uh, shortcut for kitty meta Q. Okay. Now we're cooking much better. I was like, I already have a kitty conf and it's ready to roll and we can easily get in and out. So we can easily just be like, bam, console, no console. Now, one thing I'm kind of like, mm, what's up with all the icons on the desktop? Oh, that's right. We got widget modes and stuff too. Like, this is all my stuff in the root of my home directory. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't like the messy desktop. Like, why? Huh. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting, though. Um, okay, it does show that was installed. But I don't see it over here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Not bad. Location show desktop folder. No. Icons. Yeah, it's just a weird thing. Let's see what happens if I just like move to trash. All right, here, here's like an old bass core. Let's just move that to trash. Did that remove it from the desktop? Yeah, so it does. Okay, so let's say uh, I have pipeware launcher essay. I don't even know what that script was. So if I move, okay. Yeah, interesting. So why does Plasma by default show the root folder on your desktop? So strange. Yeah, it, it, I think that's just plain Titus though. Oh, maybe there's no folder. So it defaults back to that folder. So you go home and there is no desktop folder. So when you click desktop, it goes nowhere. But if we create a new folder and call it desktop, and then we click desktop, home, desktop. So then you go desktop, bam. Does that fix it now? Probably need to log out, log back in. 
I think that was just a weird glitch since I made the folder. If Plasma made the folder, it would have been fine, I bet you. Uh, we also need to fix the SDDM theme. Nah. Eh. Ha! Huh. All right. Different. I bet you it just like, yeah. Okay. So F4 is that. And then here's your places. Is this like... Oh, that's the file tree. Okay. So I'd probably remove that. Remote, I kind of like. This, I'm kind of like, uh, I kind of want to hide some of this. So like desktop, I'm not going to use. Downloads, documents. I'm really not going to use documents either. Home folder, I'll use. Downloads, I'll use. Music. Nope. Pictures. Do I have anything in pictures? Uh, I got Nord background. I usually just rock that. I might. I'll leave pictures as as is. Videos hide. Trash. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. I, I still like Dolphin. It requires some configuration, but not not terrible. Let's check this bug out though. KDE Plasma, or I don't know if it's a bug or not, but KDE Plasma showing home folder on desktop. Sorry for the light theme. Your desktop contents in home desktop, not your home directory by default. You can customize this location by right clicking on the desktop and going to configure desktop and wallpaper. Select location on the right hand side to customize. Configure desktop um, and then location, desktop folder. So if we go custom location, so this should be here. If we click desktop folder, oh, weird. Okay. So the default folder just automatically customized to that, but anywho, good to know. <laughs> uh, Midori's nice. Like when you just load up a system for the first time, it's actually not bad. And, and I really like the lightweight nature of Midori. It's still like Chromium based. So by no means is it like, oh my God, the browser to end all browsers. It's just, I like it a lot better than Firefox because Firefox is just so uh, big uh, right out of the gate. And Midori's in almost all repos too. Mmm. XDG desktop directory is set to home. So it's not a KDE bug. That is me being me. Okay. Good to know. Pictures, music. Okay. That's good to know. So technically this one would be like desktop. Music's not even set. Public share or <laughs> templates, videos. Yeah, that's that's fine. Now let's check health. I'm sure we're missing stuff here. It's been a little bit. Um we're missing like MP or Node.js, Java, Pip, Python, Tree Sitter, okay. Python, you get Python and Node.js working and then do like a uh, install. So probably like, let's go Node.js and I think Node.js automatically grabs NPM. No, I'm wrong. All right, NPM, Python 3, um, Python 3 pip maybe. Uh, is it just pip? No. What pip do we have in here? Python pip x. I think pip x is what we want to use just so we don't have to like issue the standard like virtual environment and stuff. So uh, Python pip x. Yeah, that should be pretty good. And someone's saying Wayland clipboard manager is not in uh, KDE by default possibly let's see let's go pseudo a lot of people are probably wondering why don't i do an aur at this point i don't know man i just really don't like the aur in arch i know that defeats the purpose of arch but au if you overuse the aur in arch have fun with your broken system it's just gonna happen uh <laughs> that's just what i'm thinking so now that we have pipx we have all that uh what else we need 
probably like an npm install neovim or pyvin or pyinvim or whatever it is what is it called import neovim i think you can just do like a pipx uh isn't it no uh ah, what is that I'm drawing a blank fuzzy finders fine oh we need rg and fd oh hell let's install yay just to have though all right do, 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 do. All right, cool. So now we have VA. What else do we need? Oh yeah, FD and RG. Uh, they're great for fuzzy finding, so. FD and RG. So FD, yes. RG looks to be already installed then. Oh, that's weird. Rip grep. Maybe R rip grep something different? Hmm. No, it's just rip grep, not RG. Interesting. <clears throat> oh, we also need to check our make files too. Anytime you do a new Arch install, it always screws this up. Maybe they finally fixed it. Let's just do a sudo vim etc pacman comp. So their make packages usually are like complete crap. And they also have parallel downloads off. Oh, that's right. Okay, so make uh, parallel downloads you got to have on. And what else we got in here? Oh, that's right. You need multi-lib too. So like we're going to need stuff for gaming, of course. So we're going to be doing some gaming here. We're going to need some multi-lib action. Um, so that's fine, but that's not exactly what I was looking for. So obviously parallel downloads, 32-bit downloads is what we need. Uh, but also there's a package. Uh, make, make PKG S is the variable I'm needing uh I don't think that was in Pac-Man though was it no what was that wow drawn a blank yeah make flags that's what I was thinking now I don't think you need to put it in, in uh in there etc make package that's it ah uh, I was drawing a blank and I was like man I know I'm missing it make package conf that's what I was looking for make flags yeah we're, we're right by default i think it uses two um uh actually make so instead of two we're gonna do 32. now nah, that's a little aggressive let's do 30. all right perfect we're gonna only use 30 threads <laughs> for our make packages <laughs> makes me want to install everything now uh, I like NeoFetch over FastFetch. FastFetch is faster and more simplistic. I just like the way NeoFetch looks. <laughs> now try yay. Let's let's compile the Lynx kernel, shall we? All right. I think we have a pretty good setup here. I kind of digging the little plasma setup. A little plasma six action. Um. Now we do need to fix this node setup real fast in my NeoVim. Don't have to, but uh, man, NeoVim works so much better in Linux. I cannot tell you how many problems I've had using NeoVim. And oh, we don't have WL clipboard. Someone mentioned that earlier in chat too. That is needed. There's always it's just tracking down. Stuff. Oh no. Oh, I don't have WL clipboard, so my cut and paste isn't working from NeoVim. <laughs> Ah, all the more reason to get that package. Okay. What else are we missing? Oh, unzip and wget. What? How did I miss those? Gonna need those packages. Um, I guess let's grab Go. I don't want Java. We can grab Cargo as well. Go and Cargo. Uh, let's go Rust. I don't really like DaVinci Resolve in Linux, to be honest with you. The big thing with DaVinci Resolve and Linux is it misses like X, X64 encoding by defaults. And also it's missing. It's not, there's no feature parity between Windows. The Windows version is just better. It, it, because Resolve literally launches all its features in Windows first. And then Linux gets them eventually. So like some of the newer versions, you're just missing features when you're using it in Linux. Who knew, right? But I started using it in Linux. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm missing this. <laughs> so, yeah, 
That was sad to say. Yeah, it's kind of a bit, uh, it's kind of weird. It, resolve can be, like, I'd much rather just emulate it, though, and be done with it. Yeah, Resolve does work better on NVIDIA, but, you know, the latest AMD cards, the 7000 series cards with Resolve are, are quite good, like, really, really good. For instance, I had a 2060, well, the 2060 is now in this PC, but I had it in my inside PC, and I was using it for the longest time to make videos, and then I got a 7800 XT, which obviously this is 7800 XT card is infinitely better in every single way. But I was like, okay, what's the jump in the resolve? So it took me about 10 minutes to, to encode the video inside on the 2060. And then I did the 7800 XT out here and recorded or, or encoded that in resolve, both windows at that point, just for apples to apples comparison. The 7800 did it in two minutes. So it was literally five times faster compared to the 2060. And uh, so it's not to say Resolve hasn't fixed the compatibility with AMD. It's just Resolve with using AMD in Linux is usually where people run into problems with, with Resolve. Sad to say, that's just kind of how it is. Oh man, I remember Final Cut, the Final Cut days. You know, if I'm being honest, I really like Final Cut. I just hate Mac. <laughs> so like you look at like Resolve versus Final Cut for a noob, like I'm not a professional video editor. Yeah, I know I make money and this is kind of like my gig doing YouTube stuff. But really, if you're not doing like extensive color grading and, you know, there's just so many quality of life fixes in Final Cut and that you can make templates that makes your workflow pretty darn fast. I honestly think Final Cut's the best editor, even though I'm not using it, just because it's on Mac. <laughs> and I was like, I don't wanna keep buying a $3,000 machine to edit videos on. Uh, and that's all I would use it for. I just hate Mac for just the look and feel of it. It just doesn't feel Right, I'd rather be in Windows if that tells you anything. And I was like, no, I just can't. So that's why I moved to Resolve. Resolve's very good. And I can see why almost every professional editor uses Resolve. But I'd be lying if I didn't tell you, I still miss Final Cut. Yeah, there's days where I'm like, man, this would have been easier in Final Cut for me. <laughs> you know? Just saying, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm full resolve. I've been resolved for about a year now. I think a little over a year. All right, Pip. Uh, I want to say, let's see. We, let's just do a Q. Uh, actually I think we can, no, we're going to need to quit. Okay. Now we got most of this checked out now. Still missing some here. Mason's now. Okay. Uh, no Python pip entry. I think there's an easy way to fix that. I, I'll mess with that. Locale does not support UTF-8. Really? We could do a fixed locale option using like environmental variables there. That's kind of interesting. Uh, tree setter? I don't... Well, maybe. Tree setter? No, tree setter's installed. Huh. All right, let's try the clipboard and see if that's working. Oh, well, no. All right, the rest of this looks pretty good. And now that most people are out, I think I'll probably do Thorium. I know. Don't judge me. Do, do, do. Let's see. What do we What do we got? Uh, it might be actually in maybe AUR. We can take a look. Uh, Thorium Reader, Thorium Browser Bin. Yeah, probably Browser Bin would be the one to go with. So, like that. Lovro knows me too well. Yeah, let's fix uh, locale gin. I think we can just do a gin locale. Let's take a look. I, I have a script that you can actually force all those uh, variables in, but good to fix as well. So you just don't have problems later on in, later on in your install. All right, so what else we got? 
what's the official arch way of doing this? Um, probably just do English US like that and then do a locale gen. All right, let's go to the locale gen file, see what we got. Um, ing underscore u, ing, uh, what is it? Shift, where's my us? We're gonna go utf8, so that should fix that. And then I think it's just pseudo, uh, da, 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 da. what is it? Locale gen, all right, and that should generate. And then if you go locale, you now have all of the things set properly to us. Uh, there's no lc. I think the LC underscore all for locale uh, overrides everything. So you don't necessarily want to set that. The big thing with locale, I want to say, I think it's the C type. If you don't have that, you have problems with like collating and like uh, you notice it big time when it comes to this. Like you see how games and then GitHub and then pictures and then Titus. If you don't have proper collating in your locales, a lot of times your uppercase folders will be all before your lowercase folders, which that just sucks. So if you ever run into that problem, it's a locale issue that actually does folder sorting. I remember one time running into that and I was like, what the hell? All right, so that fixes the locale. Oh man. So now we have that going. What are the, what are the things? I think we probably should start with probably Steam, start loading that up. Let's go, yay, S Steam. So we have all the different run times. We'll do, I want to say Vulcan dash Radeon is the one you want for this, for the Vulcan driver. I want to say AMD VOK is the older one. Now we are using the AMD card almost exclusively that, that Nvidia card will be passing through to our Windows instance when we create that. I got, I got rusty, man. I'm telling you, when you use Windows too long, you forget a few things. Well, you don't necessarily forget them. Like, there's been times in the stream where it's been, I think it's been like five or six months since my last Arch install. And I was like, hey, I know the variable. It's make package, and I want to extend that. Otherwise, it's not going to build using all my threads. That's not going to be good. So then I'm like, okay, where the, where the hell is that variable again? And then I kind of sit there and sift through my mental brain. And then someone in chat usually pops up the answer. Or sometimes I'll, I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's here. AMD VLK is the proprietary one. Closed source. That's what I thought. So Vulcan Radeon is the best one. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just thought I'd get verification. Now on this one, we're gonna go, obviously we did Vulcan Radeon. You're gonna want the same 32-bit version that you pick on that one. And we will be installing all these 32-bit libraries in Steam. I would use Arch install. I, I The Titus Arch one, I haven't updated in a long time. And Arch install should work pretty well for you. Except for when we started this stream, it bombed out because of my, all my hard drives. <laughs> Arch installs like, what are you doing? There's just so much crap going on in this system. Nope, I'm just going to crap the bed right now before you start. So I didn't even actually get started on this stream. It's kind of funny. I've never seen Arch install actually fail like that. Uh, no, you don't. The D package is a Debian thing for 32-bit. For this Z80, if you're doing an Arch install, you just go into pacman.conf in your etc directory, and then you enable... Uh, or uncomment the multi-lib directory, and then you get 32-bit support. Yeah, I, I don't know why Vulcan Radian's not the default one. I mean, it should always be the default one, but that's okay. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll try out and see what see what happens here. Um, let's launch Steam. Ooh, do we want the sniper version of Steam runtime? Don't ask. I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Install Steam native runtime. It works better. Okay. Oh, I, so right now the Arch one's not configured for Plasma 5. Oh, okay. Well, it's probably better that the Arch install bombed out on us then. There's been a couple little hiccups in the stream. Me screwing up my home directory for one. That was pretty funny. But uh, overall, been pretty smooth. Pretty smooth stream for coming back. Did they update the libraries they're using for... That's interesting cool we're already away and going 
Um, I want to say there was another setting to fix the network. Um, you can actually have better network connectivity and actually better throughput in Linux than Windows or pretty much any OS. Oh, God, there was a new... Not a protocol. That's not the right word for it. Damn it, I can't remember what it was. I remember doing it, but I can't remember for the life of me what it was. Hmm. I think I did it on one of my last streams, but it scares me. Well, while it's doing this and kind of updating some of the games, let's grab Lutris. Um, one thing I kind of like to do with Lutris, let's just do a Lutris install script and see what we get that. Oh, wow. Lutris supports Proton now. Interesting. I've always been using like Proton Up and those types of things to grab uh, Glorious Egg Roll. Um, all right, let's go Lutris. Now, optional dependencies. What I'd probably grab from the optional dependencies here is game mode, GVFS, I would grab Ino Extract, 32 bit game mode. 32-bit for DirectX 12. That's already installed. Uh, Python Proton Buff for Battle.net support. That's kind of cool. And what? VK3D. Vulkan Tools is actually kind of nice too. We'll grab Wine from uh, from that. Uh, we're actually using Wayland, so we don't need X Gamma. Let's grab those guys. And now, I'm trying to think of anything else. There's always, it's literally two weeks of the doing this. What else am I missing? Uh, I think wine staging is what I'll go with for the localized version of wine. Uh, let's go, not the git. We'll just do wine staging for multi-lib. Uh, we go wine tricks as well. And also proton tricks. Uh, what do we got? Okay. Oh, no. That sure does build pretty fast, I gotta tell you. Let's see on the build size. Can't even hit enter fast enough. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Oh, wine staging is dead. Just use wine. Really? Wow. So let's just go wine version. Oops. I accidentally launched wine. <laughs> uh, I thought it was just wine dash dash version. Okay, there it is. Okay, wine 903. So they killed staging. Interesting. And if you go wine tricks. Oh, that looks different, doesn't it? Wow. That's that's cool. We got 4.8 for .NET. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Uh, did Thorium ever launch? We probably need to investigate why this isn't launching. I broke it. All right, profile exists, blah, 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 already used. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Uh, sometimes this locks up. There's like like a cache file somewhere. Um, Chromium process in use on another computer. Chromium profile locked. Uh, let's go Midoriya. And we'll go Chromium profile locked. File location. I can't remember where the file location is. This happens whenever you grab like an old cache um, just to see. So config. Yeah, okay. Profile path. Execute sync. Well, that's an interesting way of throwing that command out there. Yeah, you should be able to just do this. Okay. Singleton, uh, singleton is what we need to get rid of. So just go remove dot config thorium singleton star and then thorium browser perfect and we're back nice and i want to say appearance home button fine 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 no perfect all right we're good anytime you reuse any kind of Chromium based browser, just so you know, if there's cache files for that Thor or Chromium based browser, it'll 
it'll lock up and you just got to go through and clear out those three files, uh, singleton files in your config. Yeah, anything with Chromium on Linux is always a little bit of a <sighs> kind of a headache in Linux. That's true. <laughs> Try to overclock the PC to six gigahertz. Oh my gosh. No, no, I'm not going to do the J's two cents route here. <laughs> Although there's some optimizations we still need to make to Plasma. Uh, Plasma has some pretty bad defaults from last time I checked on it uh, that I didn't like. Uh, probably the biggest is session and how it handles desktop sessions. Ah, look at this, they're improving. This is an improvement with Plasma 6 right here that no one's talked about. It now starts with an empty session. Actually, this might be pulling some old, old settings I used to have. Probably does still screw up and do on last logout. But you always want to start with an empty session with Plasma. It'll just make your life so much help helpful. This is cool. Under session two, this looks to like be the user uh, user directories dot dir and dot config. This is just like a GUI for it. That's kind of cool. Background services. That would be nice if I could just disable search. Uh, I think blue search is what I like to disable. Energy saving. What do we got? Shut down the computer. Don't turn off the screen. Fly. Just fly through all these and just see what we have. All that looks fine. User feedback, disable by default. Keep history, fine. Lock screen automatically, no. Search, here we go. File indexing, here's blue. We will disable that. I hate blue search index. It's always been crap. Let's delete the index. Plasma search. We'll leave this on. That's fine. All right. Visual behavior, animation speed. Um, let's just crank that up a little bit. Get a little bit of an animation, but not much. Activities. I never use activities. Window management. Task switcher. Nothing. Nope. Uh, this is kind of interesting. We could grab like some KWIN scripts. Like if we want to turn into kind of like a window manager, we could probably do that. Might end up going into that route. Uh, PDF, terminal emulator. Let's switch that over to Kitty. That's kind of nice. We got our default associations right here so we could easily go through and fix everything like image viewer being that. Um, what is my favorite image viewer? Probably, probably get some GIMP going on here. Gotta have GIMP. What else do we need? Basic in an image viewer. Probably do. Probably celluloid for. I, I don't like VLC in Linux. VLC in Linux kind of sucks. Celluloid. It's kind of my favorite. We're gonna go celluloid for the video. So this would be other celluloid. Other. All right. Float rules, okay. Gwyn view is my default. Nomax for viewing images. I like Nomax. Well, Celluloid's uh, player is MPV. Celluloid just puts a good front end. It basically makes a pretty front end for MPV. That's all Celluloid does. Let's go Nomax. I like that. Um, Nomax is grabbing from the AUR. It wants to build. Okay. Interesting. I got to say, I do love the compile time here. <laughs> the front end <laughs> celluloid is my objection to it. Yeah. The whole point of celluloid is to have a front end. If you don't like front ends, don't use it. <laughs> yeah. The whole selling point of celluloid is it's a front end for MPV. <laughs> yeah. I can see how that could be <laughs> problematic. Um... How, what's the suckless version image viewer that everybody likes too? Actually, I don't know if anybody likes the suckless image viewer, but it's pretty cool. I remember messing around with the image viewer from suckless and I, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I am such a norm when it comes to that. No doubt. Nomax. We go Nomax for that. Text editor. We got NeoVim, PDF. We could probably grab a PDF one. Archive manager. Let's grab... What do we got? We got file roller. We got arc. What's your guys' favorite front end for handling compressed files? I'm tempted to go file roller 
I, it, that's mainly, I think I'm kind of like a shill for GTK though. PZip. I kind of like PZip. I, you know, I haven't really used PZip that much. How, what do we have here? We got PZip in the AUR. And there's a QT5 version of uh, PZip. Probably go with the binary version of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think right now I already have that. I, I just wanted to associate something. Let's say I click on an, uh, like, let's say I'm in the file browser and I see a, a compressed file. I'm like, hey, what's in that compressed file? It's pretty easy just to click on it to open it up and see it in a GUI tool. But more often than not, if I know what it is and I'm in the terminal, I'm not going to use that GUI tool for it. So I, it cuts both ways. Obviously, I, I prefer the CLI when I can, but by no means am I crapping on GUI tools when I it it, it makes sense to use them. All right, we'll go with uh, PZIP bin for that. Uh, terminal file manager. Yeah, that's the thing, Sleepy. When it comes to file management in CLI, I don't know, man. I, I, I'd usually just do a search. So what I like to do, like, uh, here, I'm going to associate this. And we're going to go P zip and apply. Okay. That's kind of cool. So we got all these set now. Uh, let me show something because it's kind of like how I like to do stuff. I usually just set an alias for finding files. So let's say I need to find a file with the, the word Nord in it. I usually just do FF Nord. Um, oh crap, what, is it not in here? Oh, I made it F, find grep. Mm, I felt like there was another one I was using for an alias as well. Let me look through my bash RC, it's been a little bit. It wasn't FF, it was just F. But what F is doing uh, is an alias here for finding a file. I'll, I usually just type F and then whatever I'm looking for. So what else do I have? F text searches for any files in the current folder. This is just an expanded grep. So if you wanted to find, um, yeah, I don't really use that very often though. Copy a file with a progress bar, move a file. I got some pretty cool aliases here. If you if you want to kind of browse my bash RC, I I think I need to browse my F <laughs> my, my <laughs> bash RC more. Um, God bless. Some of these are ancient though. Yeah, there's my looking glass that we're gonna be using soon. Flat pack. We need to grab that. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, yeah. So I'd go F Nord. And then it, it grab all the stuff here locally with the word Nord in it and kind of just spit it out. So then I can just be like, okay, what do I need? And then just grab that specific thing that I'm looking for. So that's kind of how I use files stuff. It's more of like, hey, I'm searching for something, but actually using a file browser in terminal, probably the closest thing I get to it is something like this, where I might do a find file or maybe like a directory preview, like just pulling this up and then browsing through it this way and going into like, let's say I wanted to go into like a dot config file dot config. Um, is this hiding my, Oh my gosh, it is need to fix that. Yeah. It's not showing me hidden files by default, but yeah, I, that's about the gist of me using file browsers in terminal. A lot of it is just doing it directly in NeoVim. And most times it's like fuzzy finding. I love the fuzzy finders from CLI, but actually browsing like folders and such. Ah, nah, I mean, I kind of like, if I'm just browsing like this, I, I prefer to do it in a GUI when I'm browsing. But when I'm looking for something, I like the CLI. I don't know. I, it, I kind of try and pick whatever's best for the situation. Oh, Microsoft Edge. Yikes. All right. What do we have now? Um, oh, we never did. We, did we, what were we doing on Steam? Did this ever download everything? We'll update our Starfield. Super important. We've got to have the best game ever made. Um... <laughs> Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, did you guys see the new Final Fantasy VII came out? That's kind of cool. Anywho, 
Uh, don't see anything here. Nothing else I really want to mess with. All right. So Steam's looking good. Lutris. Oh, that's right. I wanted to look at Lutris and dependencies because there's there's so many little dependencies that if you miss Lutris dependencies, uh, oh, de ah, dependencies. I couldn't spell dependencies. A lot of times I like to still come to their documents, the official GitHub documents from Lutris, and I still really like to grab certain things. Uh, like this one. Uh, oh, it's kind of outdated now, though, guys. Uh, the Vulcan ICD loader. I don't know, because wine staging shouldn't even be used anymore. Damn, I think I might need to update my little page, too. What does it want to install out of this? Let's just grab these package names. I'm going to skip wine staging for obvious reasons. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, I'll do... All right, what does it want to grab out of these dependencies? All of it looks like just mainly libraries, 30, a lot of 32 bit libraries, a couple plugins. Uh, all of that's fine. You probably don't need like X composite Zenorama library. Uh, that's for mainly like Xorg systems. If you're on Wayland, um, like we are, we're not going to use those, but it's not going to hurt to install them either. Yeah, well, that looks pretty good. Let's see if we get any conflicts on the install. I don't think we will, though. Most of it's just library support. Yeah. So I would still grab these, and then we just need... I would sub out wine staging for regular wine. <laughs> oh, yeah. HDR. I don't think my... Does your monitor have to be HDR support? I'm using... I'm using Fire Legend monitor. Short for Titus is cheap and bought the cheapest crap on Amazon. <laughs> This monitor is such a piece of crap. <laughs> if some monitor company watches this, I will shill your monitor and replace my Fire Legend Amazon special monitor. <laughs> I think everybody's figuring out why I have a YouTube channel. Just so I could get really cool stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm totally a cheap ass on that stuff. Anywho, all right, this looks good. I think we got pretty much all the dependencies. Uh, you don't really need to do like DXVK or eSync these days. Like back in the day, there was like U limit set at like 4,000. Almost all of them are set like half a million or a million now. Yeah, so this is half a million. I I haven't seen any distro with this for at least a couple years now with, with uh, it set to 4096. Uh, as far as performance tweaks, you could change like swappiness and other things like that. Um, we don't really have a swap file, so it probably should just ignore the swappiness command completely. So I imagine we won't run any issues there. Yeah, uh, e sync and f sync, they really shouldn't shouldn't be a positive or a negative these days. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of uh any of them anyways e even on windows when it comes to like vsync and those those types of settings i'm still like whatever <laughs> yeah i don't even think we have let's uh, does neo fetch even show swap file i don't think it does does it yeah we got 64 gigs of memory we're using almost four gigs of memory now but if we shut down chrome there goes a couple um we're almost over a thousand packages I think HTOP actually shows swap file. Yeah, swap file zero. Yeah, we're not using swap file or ZRAM or any of that. We don't need to. We got the we got the real deal. So like swappiness and those types of things shouldn't matter. So as far as the desktop here, guys, I think we got almost everything done with the base desktop. Uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I really need? Yeah, you know, and, and when it comes to Vim on Windows, I've, I've actually installed Vim a lot in my Windows sessions because I love Vim for a lot of like just single document edits. I'm not proficient enough in Vim to do a lot of like really big projects yet, but um, I'm getting there, you know, any year now, I'll get there. <laughs> uh, but 
it's terrible in Windows. It, you can set it up in Windows, and it mostly works pretty well, but when you go from Windows to Linux with Vim, it's like, oh, this works so good in Linux compar comparatively. Just installing and getting like paths correct in Windows can be a bit of a chore. Now, I'm looking at this. Let's pin that to taskbar. I'm going to close that out. There we go. Now, one day I won't use VS Code anymore. One day. Dark theme. Arial. Okay. It's like, why is my fonts all jacked up? Oh, I think I locked it up. All right, let's try that again. Oh, it's broken. I broke it. I cannot. I cannot choose this font, by the way. It just, it just won't work. <laughs> but uh, I'll have to fix that in Chatterino. That's why the spacing in here is all jacked up because it's trying to choose Arial font. <laughs> what do you think of Plasma Six compared to Plasma Five? Um, I think it's a, a marginal improvement. I think it's, it's taken what it already does well and does it even better. It's it, not a huge difference between Plasma 5 and 6, but it's still, if anything, there's when we finished the install, it was only had 600 packages. So it was like very, very lightweight. And it was really good. So I was like, hey, that's okay. Um, I, I don't know if there's much else in here that I'm like, hey, I mean, the little pop out on the start bar, you can see like how they made it rounded and kind of make like that. And then when you open up a window, it pushes it down. That's kind of a cool effect. It's just like little things like that, that is a bit of an improvement. And everything in here kind of just works, which is nice. So when you're looking at like fonts and those types of things, They've done a good job of kind of cleaning up and making things more standardized, I'd say. I don't know if there's anything in here where I'm like, yeah, I mean, it works. It's it's really good. <laughs> add a few commands. Well, what I could do is add like uh, commands and trigger it from chat, like using a stream bot that'll like flash in my face. So I could just like flash probably like a left. And do something like that that would just flash and be like oh population limit or something like that so there's a little bit more interactivity with chat uh because we i i hooked up a lot of the smart stuff uh to where it's all right here at my fingertips also that was one big thing i made is, is a big change as well uh coming from from how i used to do things was just just getting things more automated for sure uh when you till be updated soon yeah uh, BCA, I've been looking at the win util and the big thing is refactoring it and making sure everything's more minimal. This next commit, whenever I merge it in the main branch will be at least a couple thousand code uh, lines less than the last commit because win utils PS1 file is like 12,000 lines now. And that's, that's too many lines for a script. So I'm trying to bring it down to about 10 K and just make things more minimal and also run a lot faster. There's a lot of GUI components that we're dynamically rendering, and I'm trying to make those static renders using like a compile script and some other uh, black magic that's in my toolbox. So we'll get we'll get through it. We'll get through that done. We'll make it we'll make it happen. Well, all right, guys. Well, thanks so much. Uh, it was a very fun coming back stream. We got some of this going. The next stream will we have to get into virtualization. What's on the agenda for that is QMU install, Looking Glass, and oh, what else we got? QMU, Looking Glass, and then probably a lot of pass-through, a lot of pass-through. NVMe pass-through, USB pass-through, GPU pass-through, of course. Man, there's just so much to do there. That'll be fun. Yeah, of course. Uh, this is fun. I think I'll stay on Plasma for a little bit. And I think the next one, uh, whenever I come back out, it might be later tonight, might be tomorrow. I'll try and chop this stream up too and uh, upload it to Titus Tech Talk. And at the very least, I'll throw it through like Recut and get that going so you guys can watch it back. Uh, and uh, there'll probably be some clips I could probably pull from this one. We'll see how ambitious I'm being on that. I might just do just full length clips now but i don't know be fun 
No, I still love DWM. I really want if I I really want uh, Hyperland to work well. That's the big thing. I, I like the development they're doing. I like the feel and I like a lot of the themes in Hyperland. I just, man, I just want Waylon to get that last mile. You know, it's like, it feels like it's right there. And the last project I'm looking at for that was Input Leap, which was, uh, let's see, Input Leap was what I wanted to check out. This right here, they have some Wayland support um and it's like a synergy type thing uh, I, right now i think the only success stories i've seen for wayland support was like gnome based desktop environments which uh well we know that's not going to happen but i wanted to try and get into that as well and then once this is all set up this will be my main system where i'll just come out here this will be going and then I'll probably either jam out. I'll, I'll probably do some where I don't stream and I'll just program out here and there'll be other times where, you know, I'll definitely stream and it'll just be fun. Um, I probably need to set up the green screen again. I still like the green screen effect, but uh, I don't know. Uh, for my personal comfort, I like honestly just having this in the background. So I, if you guys don't care if I have a green screen or not, I'll probably just keep this for most streams. Yeah, if, if you can get an input leap going on Hyperland, I'll install it in a heartbeat. I I love, I would love that setup. It's so nice. I don't like Sway for some odd reason. I just, Sway, I, it just never felt quite right, Peter. And I, I tried Sway out like probably four or five times. Like I really wanted it to be a thing. And Hyperland to me felt more right. <laughs> It felt better than Sway. And Hyperland was my go-to. For, for a Wayland tiling window manager, uh, it's my number one by a mile. Not even close. So that's why I like, like it. And the animations in Hyperland feel so good. So that's that's kind of why I I kind of default to it. And, and I think it's Vaxry is their lead dev, and he's incredible. He's done such a... He's devoted to that project. And the, a lot of the stuff coming out there, again, it, that's probably my, out of all the Linux projects right now, Hyperland's probably the one I want to succeed the most. And then uh, if I could get it working with Input Leap, oh, my life would be set. <laughs> oh, and I got to fix my clock. It's only 5 p.m. here. So, uh, yeah, let's see. What we got? And you know what? Probably the easiest way to do this, guys. Terminal. Because everything's done in terminal. We'll, we'll leave with this one issue. Um, I think we can just set the time zone. And set up uh, NT, uh, NTP service. That'd probably be the easiest way to do it. Uh, set time zone. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Set time zone. Time date. CTL. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got it. So it's uh, pseudo time date CTL set time zone US. Uh, was it forward or? I think it's forward or backslash. I think it's back. Nah, I think it's forward slash central. Yeah. And there's also... You can set NTP uh, time date CTL. Probably the best way to do it. Okay, so you set that, bam. And this time date CTL, let's fix that too. So now we have NTP service enabled. We set our time zone to US Central and everything's right with the world. And you don't have RTC and local TZ, which is good. Thank you guys for pointing that out. Appreciate you, chat. Thank you guys for hanging in there. Oh, man. Yeah. I get a little bit of all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. I never even set up the time zone or anything, which is just Greenwich time. And, you know, a lot of times I, I some systems I never even bother. Like most servers I set up, I just leave it on UTC. I just like immediately go, okay, native six. 
hopefully we stop doing daylight savings time some sometime in the future get our crap together and do that all right y'all well i'm out of here thank you guys for in there look forward to the next stream i'm gonna go ahead and throw this in another room start chopping it up and then the next one we will be doing virtualization with tons and tons and tons of pass through i have nine pcie slots in this beast of a system down here and i can't wait i pretty much filled all of them which sounds ridiculous but you'll it'll make more sense when you get there and you'll be like oh wow I think I might toss another 10 gig card in this system just for my, um, I know this is a little bit overkill, but I might toss another 10 gig card in there just for, just for the, for the VM, the Windows VM. That'd be pretty cool. All right. Uh, well, as soon as I figure out how to end the stream, I'm going to do that. Okay. I got it. Peace all.